Hello and welcome to another build. I'm making this house. It's very cute. Um, it is from a book that was most likely published in 1935 that was just about small homes and floor plans for them and stuff like that. They're kind of supposed to be like cheap houses, I guess, for the time. And um, I found it on archive.org, which huge shout out for... I'm sure people already know about it, but I didn't know about it. Um, they're extremely useful. There's so many books on there for old, 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 old books about, you know, various, um, like houses and styles and places and all of that. And it's so incredibly useful for me now because I, most of the time, will try to find a floor plan for, um, a vintage house through Google and didn't realize that archive.org has come up multiple times in those searches and I just didn't look at it because I didn't know <laughs> so whatever um but now that I've looked at it and I've actually gone on the website and seen all these things that are under like you know what is it under? hold on hold on let me real time well real time in my time go back and look at the website so, it's within architecture domestic, that it's architecture comma domestic, and um, it's just on archive.org, it's like you can just search for this stuff, and it's all free, and, or you can borrow it, you can pay money for some items, but most of it is free, and there's so much within it. I'm so like excited about it because there's so many different plans in here that I've never seen before. So many different styles, you know. So this particular book is just adorable and it's just called um, Low Cost Homes by G.O.T. Thompson Sons, Inc. They're, the listing for this one says 1900, but there was somebody who reviewed it, I guess, and said that they found another listing that put it at 1935. So I believe that's more likely just due to the fact that there's no like seller, there's no, um, or no, in these houses, there's like garages and stuff like that. In 1900, the average person wouldn't have a garage because cars weren't really accessible to every person and et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's most likely from 1935. So that's the history behind this one, basically. <sighs> so yeah, <laughs> this I'm still making Glimmerbrook houses. I'm still making Realm of Magic. Realm of Magic. That's hard for me to say. I'm still making houses for that world and in that whole theme, just because I'm still playing it. I'm still into it. I assume there's still some people who are as well. You know, typically any sort of expansion pack, game pack thing for The Sims, people get tired of really quickly. And I think this one has held on to public interest a bit longer than normal, <laughs> I think. But for me, it has. Normally, I get over stuff. Like, I have not made a restaurant in I don't even know how long. Like, who still makes restaurants in The Sims? It's too much work. It's I tried having a vet clinic once. That was a lot. That was a lot of work and it was really hard. Just constant pets coming in. It's like, I only have two vets. It's so much work. Anyways, so I'm still having fun with Realm of Magic and I'm still making things for it. And I haven't completely redone the world yet. So like I haven't redone the bar thing, which when I remake it, it's not going to be a bar because who uses that? But something else, I don't really know yet. I'm always like slower to finishing things. There's so many people who have already redone the entire world, have redone all the Sims in it. I'm just slower. I go at my own pace. <laughs> so anyways, um, there's not much else to talk about with this build. I didn't do it like particularly in the 1930s style because I just kind of didn't want to. This is a house that I will probably actually use and actually play in and I wanted it to feel more in the current world of Glimmerbrook which is kind of old like old world you know style 
but obviously it's like modern times so there isn't a tv because I don't really use tvs in my game that often um but it just feels a lot more modern modern than like a 1930s house would I also just wanted to talk about like the future of this channel sort of not as officially not as like oh my god this is exactly what I'm planning but just as like kind of an idea of just what I'm doing my thoughts behind it I guess so obviously with this channel I post infrequently I I'm just sort of all over the place in a way but um I do want, I haven't decided yet, but I do want to nail down like a day that I upload and I do want to try to do at least once a week, every week instead of like every two weeks. And that's just for me to feel consistent and to have a bit of, you know, I guess consistency in my life and feel like, you know, I'm doing something. It's hard to, you know, have like I've never I haven't talked about this on my channel but it's hard to have depression and anxiety issues and a shitty job and also maintain a creative outlet it's difficult (laughs) so and I mean full disclosure like I've dealt with depression and anxiety almost my entire life and um I've dealt with a shitty job for four years so but yeah so I want, how do I phrase, I want to have, you know, this be just a thing that I do for enjoyment and for fun still, but I just want it to be more consistent so that I feel like I'm building, you know, not a following, but more of a community, more, um, what's that? I'm really bad at remembering words. In case you haven't noticed, but (laughs) intentionally, intentionally building like a community and stuff like that. So along with that, um, I've also, I mentioned it in my last video, but I've been a lot more active on it. Um, my side Instagram, uh, that's called vintage abodes, abodes. I can't say that word that well, but you know, it's another word for a house. Um, that one has been a lot of fun lately and I've been posting a lot on there. I've been having like getting comments from people and commenting back and um it's really cool. It's growing slowly but surely and that's not the point necessarily, but it's just really fun. It's really enjoyable for me now. And um I've started posting like floor plans and things like that just so not I don't know, just to share, like, just, I feel like a lot of people don't look at those, they don't look at vintage floor plans, they don't know, like, yeah, this is kind of where we started, you know, this is not how we started, but, like, this is what floor plans looked like, this is how people would choose their homes back in the day, and stuff like that, like, it's just really interesting to me, and, um, I'm finding that it's interesting to a lot of other people as well. So sort of building a little community of people who are into similar things as I am has been very enjoyable for me. And, you know, I'm a homebody. Like, I don't leave my house. (laughs) So, like, my main friend, not my only friend, but my, like, main friend and number one fan is just my girlfriend, Noah. And you know, she can't avoid me. She lives with me. So, (laughs) so it's, you know, I'm just sort of breaking out of my shell a little bit and getting out into the online world more since I don't drive. I don't leave my house really unless I have to go to work. So (laughs) that's my life, but, um, I'm not complaining. I'm actually like, that's, I probably wouldn't really have it any other way because this is just how I am. But yeah, so there's a bit of behind the scenes work happening and um, it'd just be really cool if more people could 
join me over there if you're interested in that sort of thing. I, I hope this doesn't sound like pandering or anything like that, but um, it's honestly just like a fun thing for me to do. And I would just love to have more people like also enjoy it, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. And I'll link it below and all of that. I just know, like, I don't know a lot of people in real life or really anybody in real life who is into, like, old houses and into The Sims as well and into, you know, the vintage sort of aesthetics and all of that. So I'm just trying to find my people, basically. That's another thing. I've been super, super into the My Favorite Murder podcast and... I've been listening to it like when I'm at work, when I'm bored, at home, like that's been my life for past few weeks now and I started from the beginning and I'm just an insane fan now. <laughs> I have just let it go. If I met um, Georgia and Karen in real life, I would lose my mind because I'm obsessed with them. I love them so much. So if you also want an insight into, you know, where I'm at right now, that's like my biggest main interest interest is my favorite murder. And, um, I would never like have characterized myself as being somebody who's like into murder or crime that much, but honestly love it, love it. And I couldn't tell you a detail about any other crime other than the one with the girl who got her arms chopped off. So, <laughs> cause that one really stuck with me. <laughs> So anyways, if you're into that, like, that's cool too. Um, I'm always open to, like, talk to people. So if you want to, like, shoot me a message or something like that, totally feel free to, whether on Instagram or... Actually, wait, aren't they getting rid of DMs on YouTube? I don't know how that's working. But um, you can email me too. I'll put my email down. That'll be fun. The only thing I won't give you is my phone number because that's weird. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry if that's like a strange thing for people, I guess, for YouTube. I don't know. I don't know how any of this works. I don't understand the mechanics of anything. So just know that going in that I am an idiot and I just don't understand how anything works. But I would just think it'd be cool if people would like want to you know, be into the same things that I'm into. Like if you happen to be and you want to feel like you're a part of a group, just follow me on Vintage Abodes at, on Instagram. And yeah, um, you can follow my other Instagram too. Sorry, I, I'm going to stop plugging things now and I'm just going to talk about this house. So in all of the houses that I've made for Glimmerbrook, I put a cauldron in them and I don't think that was the intention of, you know, the creators of the pack. I don't think cauldrons were necessarily supposed to be an at-home item, but it's so much easier than having to go to the freaking magical realm every single time you want to make a potion. So every house that I make gets their own little cauldron room, and that's that. I think it makes so much more sense. I do kind of wish they would made a smaller one, you know, that you could kind of just put on a table and they could do some potion making. You don't always need to make like five potions at one time. So yeah, then I made an attic. That's what this is. And I just, I made it like a storage attic. So don't worry, there's no bedrooms up here. <laughs> I feel like I do that too often that I, I make attic bedrooms and attic spaces too much. And they're hard to play in because they're in the roof. Um, so you don't get walls and everything, but this one I just did as storage to avoid that. And we're coming up on the end of this video, which, you know, you should know by now when I start doing any sort of gardening, um, the video is almost over and yeah, we're going to get into screenshots in a second and then you'll really see how cute this house is. I, I love it. So, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for listening to me plug all of my social medias. <laughs> and um, I will try to nail down a day that I will upload <laughs> and I'll figure it out and I'll upload probably next week. But anyways, thanks for watching. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>